I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 13. And in this module, the discussion will relate to the pricing of bonds and the basic accounting for bonds that are issued at par. Another module will follow up with the accounting for bonds that are issued at premiums and discounts. Let's begin by thinking about what a bond is. A bond is a promise to pay a stream of future cash flows as well as the maturity value. So a $1,000, 10% bond would pay over the course of a year $100 per year in interest. And at the maturity of the bond, the $1,000 would be repaid. And so a bond payable is a blend really of an annuity, the interest, periodic interest payments, and a lump sum amount, the amount that's due at maturity. And the amount an investor would be willing to pay for this bond, to buy the bond issued by a company, would require consideration of the present value of the cash flows in the bond agreement. Investors will pay a price that makes the effective yield of the bond equal to the market yield for those bonds at the time of issuance. And so let's think about bonds that are priced at par. Uh, this means that their stated rate is equivalent to the market rate of interest at the time they're issued. Investors would pay a price equal to the face value of the bond. A uh, bond at a premium, however, in this case, the stated rate of interest is greater than the market rate of interest. This should be fairly intuitive. Uh, someone to pay a premium for a bond, a price in excess of its face value, there's something they really want or like about that bond, and what it is is that it, it bears a better rate of interest than the going rate of interest. Now, conversely, bonds at a discount, these would be bonds that have an interest rate, an offering or stated rate that's well below the market rate of interest. They're unattractive. The only way you can entice investors to buy those bonds is to sell them at a discount. And the specifics of how you would calculate premiums or discounts is really a function of the present value considerations that we discussed in a previous module. Let's assume, for example, of a $1,000 face value, five-year, 8% bond, and it's paying interest every six months. And so when we look at the facts here, what we'll notice is that it'll pay $40 of interest every six months. That is, 8% of $1,000 is $80 per year, and we're talking about semi-annual periods, or $40 every six months. And then at maturity, it'll pay the $1,000. First of all, assuming that the market rate of interest is 8%, which equates to the stated rate, I've shown how the present value of the payments, that is $40 times the present value factor for a 10-period 4% annuity, that's the same as five years, 8%, but more frequent compounding, 10 periods, 10 semi-annual periods at 4% per period. The present value of the interest payments has a present value of 324, and the present value of the maturity value, the $1,000, has a present value of 675. So that bond would be priced at $1,000. The calculated value of the bond, $1,000, is equal to its face amount because its stated rate is equal to the market rate of interest. If we look at a premium scenario, now I'm going to assume the market rate of interest is 6%. People would clamor to get the 8% bonds, they would pay a premium. In this case, they'll pay $1,085 for the bond. That consists of the present value of the stream of payments of $40 the present value factor for 10 periods at 3%, half of the 6% market rate per period, is 8.53 times the $40 is the present value of the interest is 341, and the present value of the principal is 744. So again, we can check that off and see that investors would pay $1,085 for that bond. And lastly, we've got the bonds where the market rate of interest is 10%. Our 8% bonds are not looking so good. I've recalculated the present value of the payments using a 5%. 10 period annuity along with the present value of the principal and we come up with the $922.78 valuation for that bond. So very simply that's how the market prices bonds when the market rate of interest changes or it's different from the stated rate in a bond. This is by way of note, you might see a bond priced at 102, that would be 102% of par value or a $1,000 bond would be priced at $1,020. At $1, but oftentimes you'll see, for example, a price of 103.08. Bonds customarily price in 30 seconds, so that nomenclature, 103.08, that's not 103.08%, it's 103 and 8 30 seconds, which comes to a price of $1,032.50. Let's look at the accounting for bonds issued at par. Assume the company issued 100 of its five-year 8% bonds at par, here would be the entries. We begin by debiting cash and crediting bonds payable. That's to record the amount received from the borrowing. And again, we got par value for those bonds when they were issued. Every six months, periodically, we'll need to record the interest payment. Credit cash and debit interest expense, $4,000. 
That's the 8% for half a year on the $100,000 amount. And that continues for each of the 10 periods, each of the 10 semi-annual periods. And then at maturity, we repay the $100,000. So that accounting is not too complex. In the next module, we will look a little bit deeper. We're going to look at the uh, situations where there's a premium and discount using the numbers from the illustration, from the calculations we looked at in this illustration.